Hi guys, and welcome to Bev's Repair Bench. Today we will be going through calibrating the nozzle offsets on the Tin Log Hands 2 printer. Uh, now this can also apply to any of the Tin Log printers. I believe that they're all set up pretty much the same. It's a fairly simple process, but uh, you do benefit from having a little bit deeper explanation. Um, there is already a YouTube video by Tenlog out there that kind of helps guide you through this, but we're going to get just a little bit more in depth. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, um, we are at the home screen of the printer right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and preheat. So tools, temperature, preheat PLA, and that'll preheat your two nozzles. Uh, but we do actually need to go in there and also preheat the bed. And I'm going to do 50 degrees for some PLA. And while that's preheating, let's talk about what else we need. You're going to need the SD card that your printer came with. Um, on that SD card are some calibration files and we'll be using one of them to calibrate the printer. If you don't have this, um, I'll see if I can find a link. Tinlog should have a link for this. Um, and I'll put that in the description below so that you can find that file. But if not, I'll also try to maybe share it to a Google Drive or something. I'm not very good with computer gu computers, guys, so, you know, kind of take that with a grain of salt. Okay, so rather than going to the computer and uploading that file and put a pulling it up in a slicer, I think we'll just do a hand sketch to show you what's going to happen. So your extruder 1 is going to come in and pretend that I'm the extruder. The marker is the extruder basically. It's going to come in and it's going to draw a little square. Okay, I think it's got like two loops in the square or something like that. Um, and it'll also do a raft but that's not really important. So the extruder 1 will lay a square once we get into it. And then extruder 2 will come in and it will lay a grid pattern. And that grid pattern goes something I think like this. And I think there's a 45 here and it may run along the side. And then I think it runs a 45 here or something. But basically it's something along those lines. And what you're looking for, this is a mostly visual thing. Um, there's not really measuring anything involved. But I don't think I'm focused very well, am I? Sorry about that. So what you're looking for is you want this to be visually correct. So in other words, if you see, I really like these 45s. If you see one of them is way out here and the other one is, you know, for some reason is way back here then you need to do some alignment. And when we get into the alignment screen, we'll get into that a little bit more. But if you see your grid looks more like this, my marker is dying on me, guys. I'm sorry, that never happens. So if you see that you've got your outer square here, it's pretty easy to see any misalignment. Like for instance, that 45 is obviously exaggerated, but if it looks like this, then you know that you've got some misalignment in there and that is corrected through the touchpad and it's it's easy but it takes some getting used to because you have to orient yourself properly. So we all should hopefully know that our y-axis runs this way if you're looking at the front of the the machine and the touch screen is over here and your x-axis is going to run across this way and I'm not positive on the x-axis and I'm so sorry that I'm not uh, so I'm going to be learning this too as we go but if you need to move in a certain direction like for instance our y-axis is very far off here we need to increase our Y offset because we want it to come down this way so there's a plus sign here and there's a minus sign here 
So, and the x-axis is the same thing, I'm just not positive which way is which. I wrote my numbers down for what my current accurate offsets are. And I'm about to make a huge sacrifice. I hope that YouTube appreciates it by totally going and ruining my extruder alignment. All right, so we're back on the home screen. And what we'll do is, first we will go into settings. And this row here, where you see X2, Y2, Z2, those are obviously three axes. And each one of the following numbers represents an offset. So my X2 is 264.7 millimeters away from my X1, which is actually my first extruder nozzle. And it is four millimeters skewed in the Y axis also, which is kind of odd. They should actually be in line, but I think there is a slight difference in the two extruders. So. And then there's two millimeter difference in the z-axis. That's all, you know, fairly easy to understand, I hope. So let's go ahead and screw it up by, let's do something with the y-axis. I think that'll be pretty easy to tell. Um, let's make that clear and we'll make that 10 millimeters. All right, so now that we have destroyed our alignment, at least in one axis, let's go ahead and go back and we'll pretend we didn't do that. So we just started the machine up. We put our flash drive in, our SD card rather. We're gonna print from SD and we're gonna use this 20, H2 20 by 20 by 20. And um, it's gonna take a minute. Everything's gonna have to kind of make sure it's warmed up nice. You do also have that filament loaded in the machine. In this case, I'm using purple for extruder one and pink for extruder two because I have them and I can, and I actually like those colors. Let's see what that looks like. The wrap looks like it's laying down really well. Got a little extra there, but a little bit of line yep don't hurt. So I think I messed up a little bit earlier whenever I said that the distance between the nozzles is the 264.7 whatever millis. That's true, but I forgot to add that it is from the home position. So when each nozzle is homed, which they both home independently on their own switches, op actually optical sensors uh, in this case, when they're both in the home position, they are, that's the distance they're apart. That's not a critical error, but it is something that makes it much easier to understand whenever you're dealing with this, to know what that dimension means. We've got a color change happening here. You can see that raft already. If your machine is like mine, be ready for a lot of little oozing tails on this print. Uh, there is no ooze shield or anything like that. It doesn't matter, but it's going to be there. Hmm. I probably should have fed a little bit more filament down that nozzle. Because I don't think I got anything on that run. I normally like to let it go maybe three layers of both extruders switching back and forth so where you can get a pretty clear idea of what's going on. You can see that we are way off on our E2 already. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop this print. And I'm going to move this head over so we can look and see what's going on. Because I think it's important that you see, and because, well, it doesn't really matter that much to me. Alright, so as you can see, the pink extrusion is nowhere near where it should be 
as far as the y-axis. It's actually out about 13, 12, 13 millimeters away from where it should be. Now that measurement is probably exaggerated because the filament's not actually sticking to the bottom of this, so it's rolled this way some. So, you know, it's kind of, it's hard to just say, let's measure this and see where it's at when it's this far off. You should never, hopefully never be in as extreme a case of this. So what we'll do now is we'll go and adjust that Y axis and I know what number it's supposed to be because I just changed it, obviously. We're only going to change it a little bit, maybe about half the value it should be in order to show the change that happens. So let's come on down here. All right, we're back at the touch screen. So let's go to settings and we'll come to this Y2 and let's clear that and let's go to six millimeters. Okay. It was, they have pins for these and I, I should get one, but eh, whatever. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and scrape off the plate. That should be good enough. And let's go back. We'll go to print SD and we'll start that print again. Should start fairly quickly. Actually, the nozzles have cooled off a lot faster than I thought they would. Go ahead and get back to what the print looks like. It's always so difficult to show what's happening with the machine. <laughs> this is what's bad about these massive extruders like this. V6 is easy, you can see right through that thing. We should get a much better um, result this time around. So I'm gonna let the print go for maybe five minutes and then we'll pause it and see what it looks like. All right, so as you can see from our samples here, we have improved a whole lot on our alignment. Um, it's still off, but this is a good way for you to see by entering a small but noticeable measurement of which direction you're headed on your alignment, whether or not you should be adding or subtracting from those offsets. Um, it is still, even right now with me looking right at the number block, which is down here. I call it the number block. Even looking at this table right now, it's still a little confusing about how this works. So I would just say, you know, it's basically saying that X plus is going to bring it, bring the E2 grid to the left and Y plus is going to bring the E2 grid towards the front this way so understandable but you know i still like the little at a time method just to get you in the right ballpark okay so what i'm going to attempt to do here is go into my settings and i've only got the print paused right now i haven't moved anything i'm going to type in which should be the correct offset i'm going to go back and I'm going to resume print and we're going to see if we've corrected that. You're supposed to be able to do it on the fly. I would recommend always pausing. But, you know, I guess whatever floats your boat. I'm not going to yell at you either way. I don't really care. It's your printer. You do as you want. Alright, let's see. We'll probably do like two, three layers maybe. It is best if you're moving like say more than two millimeters or I would say even one millimeter. You know, if you're not moving by point decimal place, you know, increments, it would be best to actually start a new print. But since I know this number should be good because it was what it was at before, we're going to let it ride a little bit and see if it can correct itself. Alright, so as you can see, if I kind of get rid of a few of the little hanger-ons, this is what a properly calibrated E1 and E2 look like. 
see these 45 degree angles here are very just perfect they don't uh they don't protrude too much into the purple they have just a slight bit of overlap you can see that this line here is in the center of the print it may look a little odd to y'all because y'all are having some parallax going on there but trust me it is um all of the angles they're all equal um and by that i mean that kind of these triangles these triangles are all the same size so that's mostly what i look at and make sure that my two lines are centered and that's really all there is to it guys it is a little bit fidgety but once you've done it once uh, provided that you don't really move any of your end stops you should be pretty much set for life um it's just try to avoid moving stuff as much as possible all right so to the person that requested this video i hope this helps you out uh, if you didn't request it but you were searching and found it i hope it helps you if you like this video uh, like subscribe share i'm always looking for new people to talk to <laughs> And uh, before you go, I want to show y'all one more thing. Let's see if we can get that in focus there, huh? Isn't that cool? Yeah, so uh, this is my Instagram. You obviously already know my YouTube if you're on there. Um, I'm also on Twitch. Uh, if you search Bev's Repair Bench with an underscore between the two words, you should find me. Um, I stream a lot of prints, especially on this machine. And that's pretty much it. I really like how this came out though. This was actually printed on this machine. So thanks for watching and I will see y'all later. Okay, so one final note on calibration. Uh, this is a kind of optional step. This is something that I like to do. You don't have to do this. If you're comfortable with just the regular calibration cube, by all means, you're good to go. Uh, but what I will do is I will take a 2020 calibration cube in my slicer. And uh, actually, I think I drew these in CAD. But I will set it to where there are four calibration cubes and there's a 10 millimeter gap between each cube. And I will set it so that the colors, extruder one and extruder two, are always opposing each other. So diagonally, we'll have a pair of pink and the opposing way will have a pair of purple that way in each the x and the y axis you can get a measurement of the distance between the two nozzles um, you know so you should be able to measure and have exactly 10 millimeters there and that will tell you that your offsets are good um, as well as being able to check the dimensionals of each calibration cube you know by itself so just a little bonus step you don't have to do it but i'm gonna do it <laughs>